Hello. Today is another day that we get to hear the word of God and get some teaching from the Holy Spirit, Lord. So I ask that you um, come forth, Holy Spirit, and I decrease completely because you and you alone know what your people need for this time and age and day. So I thank you in advance for your word that pricks, heals, delivers, and sets free. And I thank you, Lord, that through your word, I am one of those who was healed, delivered, and set free. So thank you in the name of Jesus. And whoever hears this, whatever they're going through, whatever they're thinking about or the issues that they have, your word is the medicine. Your word is truth. And it will not come back for it. So in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for answering, for always hearing me and answering my prayer. Thank you. So we're coming from John chapter one. No, I'm sorry, John chapter four. And we're talking about the Samaritan woman. Now, I don't know how long or short this will be, but the Lord laid on my heart about dealing with people and how we deal with people and how we think about people when we meet them. So we're going to start at verse nine and it says, no, I'm sorry, verse seven. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, Jesus, how is it that you, being a Jew, now hear this carefully, him being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman. Now let's stop right there. The woman is asking Jesus, wait a minute, first of all, you, and because she's thinking that he's so above her, so important, more important than her, she's asking him, how is it that you're going to ask me for a drink, a Samaritan woman, because back in that day, women were second-class citizens, but Jesus, see, that's the beauty of Jesus, he had no respect of person, he told truth, and that was it. Whether you were male or female, child, authority, Pharisee, and that's how we should be. So listen to what the Samaritan woman, you could hear her heart. It's like, really, you're talking to me, a Samaritan, because you're a Jew, and Jews are supposed to be above the Samaritans. For it's, She says, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Okay. Isn't that like us sometimes? Have you ever had or been in a group where even in college, a sorority or uh, anything that had a group of people cliques, and we have them in the church today as well, that, oh, no, we don't deal with them over there. It's unspoken. It's an unspoken rule. You know, you just can't come out and say that. But those who are in your group understand that that person or that group does not belong in our group. That person that we have no dealings with, why? Because for some reason, there was an image or something said about that person or that group of people that put in the minds of the group that have no dealings with them, that they're second class. So let me ask you this, have you ever done that? whether in a group or yourself. Have you ever judged people according to how they look, their educational background, where they work, their financial status, their beliefs that you say, oh, I'm not gonna deal with that. Now the Bible clearly says to come from among them and be separated, that's one. But see, sometimes we get it twisted that way. When the Bible says, come from among them and be separated, that means that you are now a new creature in Christ, those who have given their lives over to Christ. And because of that, you no longer do the things that you used to do that are sinful and of the world. So those people who you used to hang out with that are sinning and still doing their dirt, sinning, he says to come from among them, be separated. Because if you don't, you're going to go back into the same situation. See, because they're going to pull you back. 
sometimes you'll be able to go back to them and they'll see who you are and how you've changed. That's a wonderful thing. That's a testimony. That's a great testimony. But if you are a babe in Christ, then yes, you have to come from among them and be separated so that you can get the training, you can get the knowledge, you can get the discernment through the word of God, because that's how you're going to get it. We Even when you get saved, you just can't say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm giving my life over to you and that's it. And then you go away. No, there's a process. There's training. There's studying his word to know what he wants for your life, his will. Because the father says, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the prayer. Your will, Lord, be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it is not our will. It is his will. And we give ourselves over to his will. And when we do, then we see great results in our lives. So go back to the separation of classes, color, even among your own people. There are people who just won't deal with, I'm, I'm considered medium dark skin. Black, African-American, however you want to put it, okay? And there are people who have no dealings with my color. They will prefer the lighter version of my race. But what is that? See, when you cut yourself, we all bleed the same. It's red, it's blood. So how is it that we have gotten so off course with the love of Jesus and how we can love, we should love one another, no matter what, no matter how we look. Sometimes we will disagree because of the way we believe and think. But that does that give you the license, the, the, the reason to shun them? Now, there are times when you do have to cut off people. And when I say cut them off, cut them off because they're toxic. They're no good for you. They mean you know well, no good. But if you know and you meet someone and you have no idea who they are, only if you do, you've been told something about them that may not even be true. But because you listen to that person or that group who says, oh no, they are beneath us or they of this kind and they do this and that and the other. All of them are alike. And you believe that? Well, shame on you, because that is pure ignorance as well as arrogance. And that's what the Samaritan was like, Lord, how do you, and she didn't even know who he was at the time. But she's just saying, because he's a Jew, they have no dealings with Samaritans. What a sad world this has become. And if you are one of those who just don't deal with people because of who they are or who you think they are or how they look, get to me. Really, I have met the most beautiful souls on the street. They are considered to society, um, what, what do you call them? What are they? Well, either bag, bag ladies or um, street people, however, whoever they are, but you know what? I've talked to them. I've, I've taken the time. See, take the time to get to know someone. Don't take their word for it. And in the Holy Spirit, once you, once you give your life over to Christ, he'll give you the discernment through the Holy Spirit to talk to that person and tell that person what they need to hear sometimes. They need to hear a listening word, uh, an encouraging word from someone that they think, just like the Samaritan, are above them. But we all are the same. We really are. We were born of a woman, came into the world, okay? We're human beings. What else is there that's different except for the way we look? But as a spiritual being, we, we are spirits in a human body in a physical body, but we're spirits. That means you can't see my spirit. You only see the outer shell. But when I die, my spirit goes back to God. So this outer appearance, see man, my favorite verse is man looks on the outside, but God looks at your heart in Matthew 6.33. 
And I told you again about my, my car and you know how people look on the outside, but they don't know who's driving it. They've not gotten to know me. They don't know who I really am. So that's what the Samaritan person, this woman is thinking about Jesus. But then Jesus comes back. See, Jesus is so loving. He says, Jesus answered her and said, if you knew the gift of God right there, stop. Because we are all our gifts of God. Because what we emulate Jesus. Jesus is our example. So we are gifts of God. Given our gifts to others. So that they can be whole and healthy. And bondage free. Isn't that a beautiful gift to give someone? A word of encouragement? The word of God that will set them free and deliver them and heal them of all that they've been through? Because sometimes your trauma has become your drama. And that's why people constantly are in a drama situation because of the trauma that they've been through. Just think about that. See, we don't know a person's story. We don't know what people have gone through. But if you take the time to stop, just like Jesus did, and tell the woman, first of all, things about her that nobody else knew. Sometimes we can get in tune to someone so clearly and hear the Holy Spirit. And as we're talking to that person, we're telling them things that their heart is pricked. That they're like, how did you know that? I've had that plenty of times. I'm talking to somebody and I'll tell them something, a word from God. And they go, how do you know that? Well, it's easy. The Holy Spirit. Because I shut everything out. And when I'm talking to that person, the Holy Spirit comes forth, just like now. This is not me. I shut everything off. I said, decrease me completely 100%. So that because God knows what his people need, an encouraging word, a, a word of knowledge, a word to get you through the next minute, let alone the next day. Jesus is our example. So he says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Living water is the word of God. Living water is life. Have you ever taken a glass of water and you're so thirsty and when you drink it, it's like, thank you, it's so refreshing. That's how the word of God is. That's how, that's how God is with us in our lives. When we wake up in the morning, sometimes we may not feel so great, but when we get the word in us, even when we drink a glass of water, it, it quenches our thirst. The word of God quenches our soul's thirst, that we thirst after him. I know I do every day. And the more I thirst after him, the more he, he fills me with the living water, which is life. And it's nothing better than that. A life with Jesus, a life with the Holy Spirit, a life with our Father God, there's nothing like it. Nothing. So Jesus gives our example. He gives us an example of how we should treat people. And then here we go. After all of this conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman, here comes his disciples and they don't say anything to Jesus. But they're looking at him like, oh, wait a minute. He's dealing with, he's talking to somebody that's not our kind. What is he doing? And he dare not ask Jesus, they dare not ask him that. But Jesus knows what they're thinking. So he says, wait a minute, you know, okay, here it is. It says, then the disciples came back and said to Jesus, after the Samaritan woman has gone away, he said, well, what are you, what are you doing dealing with her? And Jesus checks them. He basically says, look, I told her. And the thing about it, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The thing about that is, because I'm not going to read the whole thing. That's why I want you to read it. John chapter four. Okay. But he says to them, this woman basically was in need of being quenched with my love, my word my understanding of what she's gone through. I told her everything because I knew everything about her and he knows everything about you. 
And because he knows our needs and what we need, he gave it to her. He told her everything that she's ever done. And because of that, listen to this. This is the end. This is a beautiful part. And because of that, she went away and she went to the city telling the men in the city, look, come and see a man who's told me everything about myself. He must be the living God, the, that true Messiah that has come, that was promised. He has to be. So let's skip to verse 40. Now I'm going to read verse 39. It says, the savior of the world, the savior of the world. See, all of this dialogue that's taking place between the Samaritan woman and his disciples who were not pleased with him dealing with not their kind. Okay. But this is what happens. And this is what happens when we share the gospel, when we share the love, when we share our love, when we share our, our thoughts, our testimonies with other people of how we have been delivered, how the Lord has given us another life because that old life has gone away now. When we give our lives to Jesus, that old stuff has passed away. So the Samaritan woman goes and she's so happy. She, she leaves her pot, she leaves her water pot because I'm pretty sure it was probably heavy, but she was so excited and that's how it is when when you get the word of God and you, it pricks your soul and it, and it changes something in your soul, you can't help but rejoicing. And then you want to go and tell other people what the Lord has done for you. <laughs> mm. So she goes running off, leaving a pot and she runs off and she goes to the city. She left that weight behind. So she went to the city and told the men, look, come and see a man who has told me everything. So verse 39, and many of the Samaritans in that city believed him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, Jesus, see, they, they came because they needed to know, okay, who is this person? Who is this man who told this woman who is a Jew, who has no dealings with us, everything about her that she's so happy, she's cleansed and, and her life is new again. And I'm pretty sure when she was telling the testimony, this beautiful light, her eyes were sparkling again. The, the joy came back into her. Because when you're in sin, and she was, Jesus said, uh, go and uh, go call your husband and come here. This is verse 16. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband, Jesus said to her. You have, you have said, well, you have no husband. Well, you have had five husbands. And the one whom you have now is what? Not your husband. Have I spoken truly to you? And the woman said to her, him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. He told her, you don't even have a husband. The one that you're with now, that's not your husband. So when we're in sin, Jesus knows that. But when we are delivered from that sin through the word of God, and Jesus delivered her just by what he said, listen, you can change a person's life just by what you say to them. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Oh my goodness. So listen. So then he says, so when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed for two days. Okay. Because he had work to do. We all have work to do. Just don't stay in one place. When your work is done, when you have given what you've given, you go out and spread the word. Don't stay in the four walls. We're not, Jesus never meant for people to stay in the church all their lives. We are to get the training, get the word, get filled so that now we can go out and teach and preach to other people. But if you're not doing that, you're not in the will of God. You're just not. So then it's, and, and listen to me, you don't have to have a collar. You don't have to have a title. It's just your testimony sometimes that will change people's lives. It's your word of encouragement that will change people's lives. Doesn't take a lot, just the word of God and a willing vessel. 
a willing soul. That willing soul is who? You. So then it says, this is a really great part right here. These last two verses, 41, and many more believed. Why? Because of his own word. They believed because of the word that Jesus said. Now listen to this last one. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said, but we ourselves have heard him, Jesus, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the savior of the world. Why did they believe? Not because of her words, but because they heard it for themselves. See, we have to hear the word for ourselves. We have to allow God to speak to us for ourselves. The beginning is, yes, someone come along and they give you an encouraging word. They tell you about the word of God. They tell you about Jesus. They tell you about the life that they're living now compared to where they used to. But then when you get in the word and you hear it for yourself, that's when your life will begin to change. So on that note, I ask that you give your life to Christ today. I always say it's the best decision you'll ever make. And the decisions you make today, <clears throat> excuse me, will affect your tomorrow. And they will. So when you give your life to Christ, it's just a basic, Lord, I believe you are the son of God. You are the Christ. You died for me. Our father sent you to earth for our sins to give us the knowledge which he has. And then he died for us and went back to heaven. And he's sitting on the right side of Jesus, of our father. And he's making intercession for us. But it doesn't stop there. Once you give your life over to Christ, then there's a second process. That process is getting to know who he is. Getting to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Getting to know who the father is. Getting to know who the Holy Spirit is. Who at that time when you give your life to him, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you. Now, this is the most important part. And it really, really hit me and pricked me the other day. When we give our lives over to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Trinity, the Holy, well, not Trinity, but the Holy Spirit, just Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to live within us because Jesus said, when I go, I will leave a comforter. A comforter. I will not leave you comfortless. So that comforter is the Holy Spirit. And so he comes to dwell within us and he leads and guides us into all truths. He directs our path. He gives us discernment. He tells us, okay, don't go this way because it's not going to be good for you. We don't have to listen, but I advise you that you do because that's your compass. That's who will get you through this life with minimum trouble because we listen to the Holy Spirit. So once you, and, and another thing, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. I realize now that because the Holy Spirit is in me, I have to be very careful what I say. And sometimes do I get it all right? Nope. I say things that I'm like, okay, Lord, please forgive me. I repent. And that's important too. Repentance is very important. Forgiveness and repentance. They are the main two things to eternal life. So, even when I say things or do things that are not of God, immediately I repent. And don't keep doing it over again. Repent. Forgive me, Lord. Prick my heart. Let me know that that was wrong and let me keep going. Don't go back there. Just keep going. Will I mess up again? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you will too. But that's why we have Jesus as our advocate. That makes intercessions. Father, you know, she, she, mm, yeah, today, yeah, she went her best. But forgive her, you know, let, let, let's give her another chance. And he gives us chance after chance. But don't keep doing the same thing over again and thinking that you're going to continually get away with it. And that pe people think like that. And I think that's the wrong teaching even in the church. Okay, you can you can keep sinning and, and, and you'll be forgiven. Yes, absolutely. But let me tell you this. There's come, there will come a time when the sin, the sin will no longer be there so that there's a consequence. And sometimes that consequence is a cash in. And that sin 
whatever it is that you kept doing over and over again and saying, Lord, don't forgive me because he knows my heart. It's going to come back and the consequences will be the action. And that consequence sometimes is either sickness or death or a really horrible thing that happens. Why? Because of the decisions that we make. We can avoid all of that. We can avoid all of that if we just listen to the voice of God. He's always talking to us. We override him because we want our way and we talk and we talk and we talk and we let other people in our ears, in our ear gates. We see something that we want and we go after it. And then the Holy Spirit says, ah, put on the brakes. Mm -mm, don't go. Because if you do, there's an accident waiting ahead. A head-on collision, okay? And you may not survive. That's the danger of sin, of keep sinning and know that you're sinning and you keep doing it. Give your life over to Christ today. Get in a Bible-based church that teaches and preaches the word of God because the and all the word from Genesis to Revelation do not allow them to skip don't stay in a church that they skip or they just pick and choose what they want mm -mm. you should be in a church long enough if you've been in there for five years you should have learned Gen Genesis and Revelation through Revelation and some people don't even want to touch Revelation I tell you God's word is from G to R, Genesis to Revelation. His word is his word. He doesn't pick and choose. This is why he wrote it, because it's important to all of us. We can't pick and choose what we want, just like uh, I'll take this and leave this over here, throw this over. No, no, that doesn't work with God. He says, take the whole thing. Take me or don't take anything. Take me all, because he wants all of you. He wants all of you. You should want all of him. On that note, continue to hear what the Lord is speaking, what he's saying in this day and age. There's some stuff coming down the road. We thought COVID was really bad. There's some stuff coming down the road. Some of you won't be able to handle it unless you have the word of God written in your heart written in your heart, written on the sole of your heart, written on your forehead, however you can get it in, make sure it's in you because there will come a time when you probably can't even find your Bible, but you better have the word of God in you. And when you do, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to your remembrance and you can use it as your weapon of warfare because you're going to need it. Oh yeah, coming down the road, you're going to need your weapon of warfare which is prayer, fasting, and believing who God is and what he says he will do for his people. On that note, love you. Have a great week.